Hello, my name is Peter Marvel and this is a video about the audio post-production of Afterlife, a student film I wrote and directed. This film was created by third year University of Windsor students for a cinematography course. For this film we recorded on the sound devices 744T using the Sennheiser MKH416 microphone. Most of the post audio work for this film consisted of adjustments and refinements of clips, a lot of removal of unwanted background noise, some foley work, and a couple of effects. But there were two cases where there was audio dialogue replacement and one instance of dialogue swapping. The first scene of Nicholas driving in the car could have stayed as is, but I decided to do some ADR here for a few reasons. The road we drove on had these bumps that were quite audible, and the cuts didn't match up in terms of audio quality. Plus there was this crucial line, maybe two, that were a little hard to make out. So now I'm going to play the first minute or so of the version I submitted for class. This version had to be done within a tight time frame, but later on I went in and fine-tuned things. Hey babe, just letting you know that I'll be home in about an hour and that I'm pretty sure that I got the contract. Uh, Bill over at Citizen Tech was pretty impressed by my programming and cybersecurity skills, so I think that'll bode pretty well for me. Oh, and also... So I don't I know if you can hear the bumps, but to me they're quite audible. This week. Figured that'd be a nice little surprise for you. Alright, so I'll see you in a little bit. This GPS tells me where I'm going. And that cut right there didn't sound very Bye. seamless. Love you. Us now we have Catherine Jensen, a political science professor at the University of Windsor, to, to tell us about the potential ramifications. That line was pretty crucial to the story. The character states how he feels helpless to do anything in matters that are much bigger than him. Little does he know, he actually will be able to make a difference later on. But because that was a crucial line, I wanted to make sure what he was saying was quite clear. This line wasn't in the original script, but it was necessary to add since I couldn't secure a location with a road and we had to shoot on private property. The character needed to question turning into this country lane, but it was hard to make out what he really said. So with ADR, all audio is removed from the video and redone in post. So the first thing I had to do was record the background sound of the car driving on the road. I needed the car driving, slowing down, and turning. And as you heard, there was some weird, like, clunkety-clunk sound. But I was able to minimize that in the final version. Then I had Nicholas come in and redo his dialogue. I did this in my office at work, not having a studio to record in. My office has a noisy ventilation system, and it has hard reflective walls, which is not conducive to recording audio. This is what the dry recording sounds like, without any filters or effects. Hey babe, just letting you know that I should be home in about an hour, and also that I'm pretty sure I got that contract. Uh, Bill over at Citizen Tech seemed pretty impressed by my programming and cybersecurity skills, so I think that'll bode pretty well for me. And now the wet version, with filters and effects. And at some point I do turn on the road track. Hey babe, just letting you know that I should be home in about an hour, and also that I'm pretty sure I got that contract. Uh, Bill over at Citizen Tech seemed pretty impressed by my programming and cybersecurity skills, so I think that'll bode pretty well for me. Oh, and also, I picked up a blueberry pie that we saw at the bakery we at last week. So the thing I discovered about ADR is that when you record something, it's going to sound completely different from your original recording since it's recorded in a completely different environment. To make it sound like it was recorded in the environment you shot in, you have to try to make the dialogue match its original setting as best as possible using various filters and effects. In my case, I also had to clean the audio first because I recorded it in my office. Luckily, I was completely redoing all the dialogue in the car, as I doubt I could make it match existing dialogue if I was only redoing one line. I could have recorded this in a car, but Nicholas needed to watch and listen to the original dialogue as new lines were being recorded, so I would play the movie while he said the lines again. So it needed to be recorded in front of a computer. It didn't match up 100%, but I had purchased Vocaline, which does the job of matching it perfectly through software magic. Vocaline is essential if you are doing ADR. Now here are the two clips with the lines I felt were necessary to replace. Inevitable. With us now, we have Catherine Jensen, These a idiots are going to get killed, killed at the University and there's of nothing Windsor, you can do about to it. tell us about the potential ramifications of this break. Oh. Is this even a Next we have an example of dialogue swapping. I didn't like the wording of a line spoken by the actress. 
ideally I changed it before we shot everything, but it is what it is. Luckily, I noticed in the edit that when she says the line, the camera isn't pointing at her, so I thought I could swap the dialogue out and no one would notice. Here's the original clip. You'll notice it's not a clean cut in the beginning of the clip because I extended it knowing the line I was replacing it with was slightly longer. This is why you haven't felt the need to eat or drink or sleep the last couple of days. We believe your displacer malfunctioned and, well, the facilitator wasn't properly trained. And here's the swapped out version. This is why you haven't felt the need to eat or drink or sleep the last couple of days. We believe you somehow got trapped in this work area because, well, the facilitator wasn't properly trained. So you'll notice it sounded weird. Since the dialogue was originally recorded outside and it's only one line, I met Faye near her house and we recorded it outside to try to match the recorded environment. The problem was this was in the city and cities have a different background ambient noise compared to out in the country. Here's that same clip without any filters or effects. Why you haven't felt the need to eat or drink or sleep the last couple of days. We believe you somehow got trapped in this work area because, well, the facilitator wasn't properly trained. So you can see I split that line in two, and there are many effects for those two tracks to clean up that line and make it match the existing dialogue. In retrospect, I maybe should have recorded this indoors and then matched it up in post. The last line of the film has Michael saying that Elvis has left the building. We only did one take of this shot. Michael did a great job of acting here, but the problem was his delivery of the line was not as audible as I would have liked. When I increased the gain, it amplified the noise in the office. And here's that original line. <clears throat> Elvis has left the building. And here's the audio dialogue replacement line. Elvis has left the building. This is what that line sounded like without effects. It was recorded in my office, and after cleaning up the background noise, I then had to make it sound like it was recorded in that room, which wasn't easy and not perfect. Elvis has left the building. This scene highlighted another issue I had in general about the recorded audio in this room. The room is very large with hard reflective surfaces, so Douglas's voice had a lot of reverb. I thought about it afterwards, and I think maybe we should have set up some sound blankets. I used a D-Reverb plugin, but it only does so much. Too much tinkering with plugins can cause a voice to sound unnatural and altered. Here are the before and after. Will someone please kindly explain to me why there was no nuclear war? Will someone please kindly explain to me why there was no nuclear war? So this was the only recorded Foley I had to do. I'm not sure what happened here, but this shot didn't have any audio recorded with it. Luckily, it wasn't dialogue or anything super hard to recreate. I used a scream from another take, so I was lucky in that sense. But in this take, he walks towards the car and thuds his head against it, so I had to record that. It's not perfect, but I doubt anyone will notice. Here is the before and after. For this part, I wanted voices from outside the work area bubble to bleed through. The displacer that is making the bubble is somewhat malfunctioning, so there are times when the outside world does come through, as is the case here when two people walking a dog are near the work area the main character is trapped in. For whatever reason, I thought about Poltergeist scene where the little girl is trapped in the TV. I wanted to use that kind of audio effect, so I did some googling and found out how to do it. Hopefully it sounds okay. Here are three clips. One is the dry version. The other is a wet version with just the voices, and the last one has the effects along with the wet voices. Hey, do you see a car over there? <coughs> no. What car? Hello? Hey! Help! Did you hear something? <coughs> Let's get out of here. Hey, do you see a car over there? <coughs> no. What car? Hello? Hey! Help! Hey, do you see a 
car over there? Hello? Hey! Help! Did you hear something? Let's get out of here. This last clip shows how cutting from shot to shot can be problematic, depending on many factors while recording, especially when shooting outdoors. For example, if a plane is flying overhead, it will get recorded, and if you are cutting between a conversation and the plane flying overhead has come and gone, then you will hear it in some shots and not others, and it will be very noticeable. The first part of this next clip has a dry version of the recorded audio. I used Isotopes RX-7 to remove unwanted background noise and you will hear that in the second half of the clip. Sometimes this noise can be covered up with music in the background, but I chose not to have too much music in this film. I could have had some ominous droning sound in certain shots, but those would be more appropriate for a horror film. I really wanted to get across a sense of isolation and I felt music would have taken away from that. Of course this makes sound mixing much harder because you can't cover up recording flaws with music. Using room tone helps, but only so much. I swear. Where it just ch kidding. I <sighs> so that pretty much covers it for the audio post production of Afterlife. Thanks for watching.